what exactly uh, are media queries? Uh, one of the things that we need to know about media queries uh, is that they allow us to spawn to different screen sizes and resolutions. And uh, that's kind of one of the core concepts of the universal theme is that uh, we're not bound to just strictly looking at uh, our applications through a, a desktop uh, interface or a desktop viewport. Uh, how does Apex use this functionality? Well, you can observe uh, as you use a universal theme uh, application, as you resize your browser, you can see that the menu will collapse and um, uh, different uh, components uh, in different regions will resize accordingly. Uh, and that's great that the Apex team has prepared all of that functionality for us kind of out of the box, but we might want to expand upon that functionality and kind of implement components and widgets uh, our own way. So kind of how do we do that for our stuff? Well, the first thing is that um, we need to probably educate ourselves a little bit about how these uh, are configured. Uh, and if you want to know what the individual uh, the kind of the configuration is for the uh, media queries for the uh, Apex environment. Uh, one of the first things that you can do is you can head on over to apex.oracle.com slash UT. If you haven't been there already, fantastic resource. Strongly encourage you to um, uh, open that site while you're developing. In fact, uh, oftentimes when I'm building uh, websites kind of um, on one screen or when I'm building Apex apps on, on one site or on one screen, I'll have my builder and on another screen, I'll kind of have the UT application open uh, for referencing icons and other CSS classes and things that I, I think are helpful. But towards the bottom of my screen, you can see that there's kind of these pixel sizes and these pixel ranges uh, that have uh, been defined. Uh, and you can actually see that um, uh, Apex has these special classes uh, that, re that are mapped to uh, particular pixel sizes. Hmm. And uh, let me actually uh, show you the, the, the site that kind of has this information, because I think that's also extremely helpful. In Apex Oracle Com. UT. And when you come to Apex Oracle Com UT, uh, of course, it takes you to this nice little landing page. Uh, but we're going to spend uh, some time uh, over on the in the uh, reference uh, area, I find there's a lot of good information here. Um, and so I spend a lot of time looking at these different CSS utility classes and all sorts of information. But if you want to get general information uh, about kind of how Apex uh, deals with the layout, there's actually a special layout section here that you can click on. Um, and it'll actually show you kind of the individual columns and, and kind of how, uh, you know, the 12 individual columns that regions can be broken up into. And it also talks about the column modifier classes here. And here you can see that uh, we have call, you know, extra, extra small, uh, extra small, small, medium and large. Hmm. OK, but what is that? What is that telling me? Um, the other thing that I need you to realize is that um, if you say toggle layout columns, you can actually see that there are 12 kind of invisible columns that are being used uh, to control the sizing of my element. So if I was to say that something was to consume six columns, I can see that uh, it's going to take up six of the 12 available columns, which results in uh, that region or that component being 50% of the available space. So six columns plus six columns equals 12 columns, which makes up 100% 100 of the space. And you can see this different, uh, you know, this broken up into different sizes and you can uh, use these different uh, sizes accordingly. Okay, so there's 12 columns. I get that. What does that have to do with these column modifier classes down here? What's the connection? Well, check this out. Um, I have an application uh, here, and um, I just want to show you, I have this uh, maybe not the most appealing background color at the moment, uh, but um, you'll notice in a second that the background color is going to be changing as I, uh, as I pick different sizes. But I want you to, show, I want you to see something. Uh, if I press uh, F12 and open up my developer tools, 
Uh, and most browsers today, uh, Chrome, Firefox, uh, and I think IE has this. I don't do a lot of development in IE, but uh, I think they have this. Uh, but you can do this really cool thing where you toggle the device that's being used. And basically what this does, this allows you to control the size uh, of the of the viewport without really resizing your entire browser. And I like that. Uh, so watch what happens. You can see I have a normal region. I have some custom classes added here, and I have a tiny region here. Hmm. What does that mean? Well, uh, as I get smaller, notice that the regions are all behaving in a similar way. Uh, and you can see my background color uh, kind of changes. Uh, the reason why the background color is changing is because uh, it's just letting me know when I've hit uh, a different breakpoint in Apex. Um, and you can see that my custom class here uh, kind of stretches uh, earlier than the normal region. And you can see that my tiny region is still kind of in lockstep with the normal region. Let's get a little bit smaller. Let's see what happens. Finally, when I get to another smaller breakpoint, uh, I can see that my normal region has expanded, my custom classes has expanded, but you can also see that my tiny region still never expanded. The whole time, it just stayed that size. And that might be something that you want. So uh, how exactly am I controlling these sizes or kind of instructing these classes or these regions to expand and collapse the way that they are? Well, let's go take a look. I'm gonna turn off, I'm gonna stop toggling this. And we're gonna pick this page apart one step at a time. Um, uh, let's actually first start with these background colors. Then we're going to start. Then we're going to venture over to these regions. Okay. Uh, now we can see uh, that uh, I'm currently editing this page. Well, how exactly did those background colors show up? Well, if I scroll down over on uh, while selecting uh, my page level properties, uh, if I scroll down on my properties menu, um, I can see that there is some inline CSS that is included on this page. And um, what I can see is that um, there's this really helpful keyword here called at media, and it allows me to then also specify a size. You can think of this like an if condition. So I'm kind of saying if my screen is at most uh, 60, uh, 640 pixels, then make my background color red. If my screen is, you know, between these ranges, then make it orange, between these ranges, yellow, green, and then finally purple uh, once it gets up to a, a certain size. So that's kind of cool. I can see that um, if I have a, a some CSS styling or I want to control things visually, uh, I can totally use a media query myself uh, to kind of adjust how things look. Um, it's probably in your best interest to try to follow the lead of Apex um, and uh, say, uh, can you wanna use whatever breakpoints uh, Apex has built? Uh, you wanna follow along with those. And what I mean by that is when you go to the grid layout, um, it's telling you the different sizes that it will respond to here. So if you wanna make a media query or, or some sort of breakpoint, you might want to kind of stick to these particular breakpoints because that's when Apex is going to respond and do uh, its kind of pre-built changes. Okay, so that's how, kind of how you can add your own CSS. Um, but what we observed happening on the, uh, what we'll, we can observe uh, happening on our page isn't just uh, CSS responses to the adjustments or the changing in our screen size. So let me actually go ahead and uh, run this page again. And I'll go ahead and press F12 to open up my developer tools. I will enable my toggle device by clicking that little button. Uh, in Chrome, it, it has uh, a uh, very similar button that um, 
uh, you can click on, and I believe also the shortcut is, yeah, it says Control Shift M. Uh, why is my device not visible? There we go. Um, I want you to observe something. Uh, over here on the left-hand side, as I make my screen much larger, uh, not quite large enough, almost there, you can see that this navigation decides to expand. Um, I just want to be clear that uh, this is uh, not at all uh, related to, or this is not just CSS. There's also some JavaScript going on uh, to trigger that uh, to, to happen. So how could we do something like that with our widgets? Uh, rather than just writing CSS, uh, we also have JavaScript that responds to the size of the, of the page. Well, it turns out that um, if we come back to our universal theme sample application, Under References, there's an area here for JavaScript APIs. And I can see that right here, there's this Apex Theme Util uh, MQ for Media Query. And what's really cool about this is it'll actually let you listen uh, for uh, different media query sizes and then it'll let you perform some sort of JavaScript action. So at the moment, uh, this is saying that uh, if at a minimum my screen is 640 pixels, then I just want to log and say that the window has resized and the viewport is at least 640 pixels. How could I add that to my page? Well, if you were to copy this code, go back to my page properties, and I have execute when page loads. You can see that I pretty much just copied that exact code. I didn't want to change it. I just wanted to leave it exactly as it was. And we can observe that uh, as I resize my page, let me close this. Um, if my page is below 640 pixels, so it's below 640 pixels, and if I change my size, you notice that nothing happens. But, um, and also a, a a helpful tip is you can also manually change your pixel size. So it was 640 pixels was the threshold we were looking for. So if I said uh, 641 here and enter, you can see that uh, it'll log that the window has resized and the viewport is at least 640 pixels. So if I had some JavaScript that I wanted to execute when it got to that size, I can totally control that. And I think that is really cool. So the other thing that I want to talk about is how do these regions actually, how are they resizing? Is that related to JavaScript? Well, in this case, no. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the CSS classes that are associated with these individual regions. So uh, if I was to uh, quick edit this normal region here, uh, notice that uh, I have a column span of six. I'm just declaratively using what uh, Apex um, offers me. That, that's all that I've done here. Nothing special. However, let's go to my custom classes. And notice here that um, I have a column span of automatic. But here comes those custom classes that I had mentioned. You can see that we have, and that's kind of small, so let me go ahead and um, actually one of the things that I like to do um, is I like to you know, sometimes uh, paste the code here so I can zoom in for you. Um, you can see that uh, we have column large, six columns, medium, six columns. When I get to the small breakpoint, I want to be 12 columns, and when I get to the extra small breakpoint, I still want to remain at 12 columns. So basically what this means uh, is that you can think of these as like little individual if statements. Uh, if the screen is large, then make me six columns. If the screen is of medium size, make me six columns. And then finally, if it's small, I actually wish, I wish to, to consume 12 columns or 100% of the screen. So you can kind of control the exact sizing as things get bigger or smaller inside your application. Fair enough. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at tiny region. What's different about that one? 
And if I pull the code for tiny region, the difference here uh, is that you can see that regardless of the size, I'm saying always be six columns. If it's large, medium, small, uh, extra small, or extra, extra small, um, I don't care. Uh, I want uh, you to always be six columns. Now, is this the right thing? Uh, I don't know. It just depends on the situation. But I have complete control over the exact sizing of my region at any given time. Okay. I didn't have to write any extra CSS to do this. Um, I actually just went ahead and uh, leveraged existing classes that the Apex team has created for me. Okay. Um, and there's actually one thing. Um, I'm going to go a, a tiny bit off script here. Um, there is a new thing that I, I guess I, I just wanted to show you that um, I think is also extremely helpful. And let's go to responsive CSS classes. Um, there's these newer hidden classes that have been added. Uh, and if you actually want to hide components uh, based on media queries, uh, there's this fantastic grid here that will show you uh, exactly uh, kind of when something is going to be hidden and when something is going to be visible. Uh, and there's kind of these two funny uh, classes here. It's a uh, hidden large and down. Basically, this means uh, it's always hidden because uh, that means it's hidden from when it's large all the way through to the smallest size. And kind of the opposite direction, you have hidden when it's extra, extra small and up, which means that it's hidden for this size as well as even if it's large. So what does this mean? Well, if you wanted a class to be able to hide things at different sizes, you can kind of find the appropriate class and pick it. So let's just say, for example, um, I want my region to be hidden on the small size and down. I'll go ahead and copy this. We'll go find my normal region. And I'll say column CSS classes. Um, I should be able to say that it's hidden uh, the second it gets small and lower. Let's see how well we do. Notice that the region is gone because it's small. And if I get bigger, you can see that the region comes back. So that's kind of a nice, easy way to, if you want to potentially toggle different regions uh, based on different sizes, uh, you could totally do that very easily with the addition of some CSS classes. Cool. Uh, so that's media queries. Uh, as well as the responsive classes uh, that uh, we can use to kind of interact with our page. Hey, Tyson, this is Dave. Quick question. Yep. Um, what, your, F, your F12 function in, in Chrome. Yes. Do uh, you have any special function associated with that? Do we need a plug-in for that? Ah, no. Um, so uh, shipped with all browsers uh, today, uh, it, it, it should, it's an IE, Firefox, and Chrome. When you press F12, that opens up developer tools, and I strongly recommend that all Apex developers become familiar with developer tools. Uh, developer tools gives us fantastic insights uh, into, you can write ad hoc uh, JavaScript against the page, and I can say, hey everyone, and it'll actually execute that against the page. That's pretty cool. And the other thing that it allows you to do that I think is just so incredibly helpful um, is you can actually inspect individual elements. And I will be doing this later uh, to kind of show you uh, how you can find the definition of different elements.